APIs are the backbone of most modern applications, allowing different systems to communicate with each other. But how do we ensure that only authorized clients can access these APIs? That's where API authentication comes in. In today's video, we are going to explore four key questions about API authentication. What it is, why it's important, the most common authentication methods, and how it differs from API authorization. So let's dive in. API authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a client or user trying to access an API. Think of it as checking someone's ID before they enter a secure building. Just like how a building only allows authorized people in, APIs need to ensure that only verified clients or users are accessing sensitive data or resources. Without authentication, anyone with access to the API URL could make a request which could lead to data lakes, breaches, or unauthorized use of services. So, the primary benefit of API authentication is, of course, security. It ensures that only authorized clients can access the API, reducing the risk of malicious attacks, data breaches, or unauthorized access. It also allows API providers to control access based on the user's identity. Different clients can have different permissions, ensuring that users only access data or services they are authorized for. And when clients authenticate, the API provider can track who is accessing the API and when, which is useful for auditing purposes and understanding usage patterns. And by knowing which user or client is accessing the API, you can apply rate limits or throttle access to ensure the API isn't overwhelmed by too many requests from a single source. Now, there are several ways to authenticate API requests, and the method you choose depends on your security requirements and complexity of your system. Let's look at the most common API authentication methods which exist today. HTTP basic authentication is one of the simplest forms of authentication. Where the client sends a username and password in the HTTP header encoded in base64. While easy to implement, it's not very secure since the credentials are sent with every request and these credentials are not hashed or encrypted by default. So they can be intercepted, which makes this authentication mechanism insecure unless it is used in conjunction with HTTPS. With API key authentication, the client sends a unique key that acts as their identifier when making API request. This key is issued by the API provider to the client, enabling them to monitor usage and control access. While simple to implement, API keys offer limited control over who can use the API. They function similarly to a password. If an API key is compromised, it's challenging to restrict or revoke access for specific users. The key must accompany every request, either as part of the query string, in the request header, or within a cookie. To safeguard the key from interception, it's crucial to use HTTPS to ensure a secure transmission. JWT, which stands for JSON Web Token, is a compact stateless mechanism for API authentication. When a user logs into an application, the API server creates a digitally signed and encrypted JWT that includes the user's identity. The client then includes the JWT in every subsequent request, which the server deserializes and validates. The user's data is therefore not stored on the server side, which improves scalability. JWT authentication is popular because it allows the server to issue tokens that clients can use to authenticate themselves in future requests. The token contains information about the user and is signed, meaning it can't be tampered with. It's stateless so the server doesn't need to store session data. JWT authentication has become a go-to solution for securing APIs in scalable, stateless environments. If you want to dive deeper into how JWTs work, check out my previous video where I explain how JSON Web Tokens ensure both security and efficiency. OAuth is the most widely used authentication method for APIs today. It is much more secure than basic authentication or API keys. OAuth allows users to authenticate via third-party servers like Google or Facebook without having to share their credentials with API itself. In fact, OAuth 2.0 introduces the concept of access tokens, which can expire and can be revoked, providing more granular control. OAuth 2.0, which provides greater flexibility and scalability than OAuth 1.0, has become the gold standard for API authentication. And it supports extensive API integration without putting users' data at risk. Now, I have also made a detailed video on OAuth 2.0, where I break down its flow and explain how it handles complex authentication use cases. Feel free to explore that if you're interested in a deep dive. Finally, let's clear up some common confusion between authentication and authorization. APA authentication answers this question, who are you? It is about verifying the identity of the client or user trying to access the API. 
APA authorization on the other hand answers the question what are you allowed to do it's about determining what permissions the authenticated users has to put it simply authentication verifies your identity and authorization verifies what you are allowed to do once you are authenticated for example when you log into a website it's authentication you may have different access levels based on your role as a regular user you might only be able to view your profile but as an admin you might be allowed to edit users or modify data APA authentication is critical for securing your APIs and ensuring that only authorized users can access sensitive data from basic authentication to OAuth and JWT there are several methods available each with its own benefits and trade-offs and remember authentication verifies identity while authorization determines access if you want to learn more about specific APA authentication methods like OAuth or JWT do check out the links in the description for deeper dives into those topics and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech videos